There's a lot of nice brickwork around here. Look at these. Or this. And how about these ones here? Hmm. Whoa. Wow. Too good for the police. It's got a little hat. Ooh. This part of town was built when it was normal to use special bricks to solve problems and make statements. This gable end has got at least six different kinds of bricks in it. They've got different colours and special shapes. By contemporary standards, it's bonkers. So when it came to solving the front two corners of the structure, I wanted to put up a couple of brick pillars that were really nice and in keeping with the rest of the area. But as I said in an earlier video, if you put things up out of solid bricks, they tend to be a bit cold. So I'm going to have to work out how to put up some fake pillars, which is not going to be easy. So welcome to episode one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Brick columns. I guess if they were real brick columns, they'd be bonded like this. And they'd be self-supporting. But in a 300 mil wall build-up, that only leaves me with 100 mil here for insulation. Because the brick is cold and because 100 mil isn't enough space to make up the thermal performance using cork or hempcrete, I'd end up with a cold spot here on the wall if the column was really two bricks deep. So instead of that, I'm going to make up a pretend column bonded like that. So now I've got space to put a piece of cork and hempcrete within a 300mm build-up and get the same thermal performance that I would get out of 300mm of hempcrete. But now there's a tell in the front of the column because there's no bond here it's obvious that it's not really two bricks deep. So I'm going to solve that by putting a false bond in the face of every other brick by notching the front face with an angle grinder like that and then pointing over the top. So now it looks like a brick column. It's not going to be self-supporting like a brick column in this direction. So I'm going to have to tie it back to the wooden structure. The column is supported by these two timbers. I need to set the brick up like that. And um, because there's a little bit of inaccuracy in the placing of the structure, I've got the three bricks below the damp proof core still to put in. So I've got to do this setup project it downwards and then start laying bricks underneath. This is quite a tricky setup. If you're looking from above, you'd have one timber there, one timber there set in slightly. The brick sits like that, flush with this one. Then you've got a piece of angle here that sets the brick off this timber and protects it from the damp. And then a tie from that to the centre hole and you've got a second piece of angle here which defines this front face and then you've got a third piece of angle which just puts a small gap here that sets this brick off from there and you've got to do all of that all the way up the building in regular steps of 75 millimetres But I also need to complete the airproof vapor permeable layer around the edge of the building. So I need to put a piece of membrane in there, around there, around there, and around there in order to seal this gap here off and at the same time protect these pieces of angle from the line. Here are those pieces of angle set up with the right fixing points on them. It goes together like this. That mark there is the level of the top of the first brick, set up using the laser level from the same datum point as the rest of the building. 
this piece of angle is set up on that line and then each course of bricks is notched into the front of there at 75 millimeter intervals and the tie for the brick goes in like that. The second piece of angle goes in like that, also set up on that line and notched at every course of bricks and that defines this face here. Then I check the vertical with the laser level here and then put on the third piece of angle which defines the side of the brick column and then the brick ties in like this. Now I've projected downwards from this brick here to where I left off on the foundation and set up these first three bricks and this is the first false bond. I've got the membrane in place now so that completes the airtight envelope around the outside of the building in case there's any gaps at the edge of this brick column. It's fixed on with stainless steel screws. Um, I'm guessing although the aluminium is much less reactive than steel it will eventually get attacked by the lime so I'm folding the membrane around it like this and protecting that one with a piece of tape to keep the lime mortar off it and that should do the trick. Now I'm going to cut all these slots. One of the reasons I came up with this solution is that the two outside corners of the building, this one here and this one here, are at different angles but I still wanted to frame the door within two symmetrical looking pillars. So by riffing on these glazed brick columns on the main building, I was able to come up with this design where I absorbed the weirdness of the two different corner angles into the curve of the bullnose brick. This corner is the meeting point between the vertical face defined by this plane here and the vertical column defined by this strip of bead here. So I'm going to make one more check before I fix this one in place because I do want the two to join up neatly here. This little jig represents 100 mm hempcrete which joins the brick column around about there. I've got a little mark there showing the corner. So if I project that up to the top, I can check the placement of the column. And that is pretty good. So I can go ahead and fix it. Gonna put the columns up with NHL5 line, which is a bit stronger and more waterproof than 3.5, but will still be breathable. So I can put the hempcrete up against it. Even with the column stepped away from the timber and protected with a membrane, it is still quite close to the wood and I probably wouldn't do this unless the columns are for the most part protected by the awning of the roof of the structure. It's coming together quite nicely. I'm gonna put in a few stained steel ties as I go up so that it's definitely going nowhere. So, here's the finished article. Every day I cut bricks with an angle grinder and every night my hair is matted with brick dust so I thought I'd try something new and clean film myself up. There we go. I'm ready to go. <sighs> yep, it works a treat. Today's hair care advice was brought to you by Sainsbury's. Terms and conditions apply. You may still meme yourself with an angle grinder. Always use PPE. Sainsbury's takes no responsibility for you. None whatsoever. None at all. None. Your statutory rights are not affected. My locks have been glossier than ever before since I used cling film. You like this video? There's no point in telling me. Gotta press the little button and tell the algorithm. You wanna know when there's another? Gotta press the subscribe button. You wanna give me your hard earned money? Well, there's a Patreon link in the description box. I can't stop you. It's a free country. I mean, it's not, but you know. Ooh.